Hi Cancer, welcome back to Higher Source Tarot for your February 2020 mid-month tarot check for all Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus and the sign of Cancer. If that's you, you are in the right place. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed, commented, liked, and shared my videos. I so appreciate that. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos are posted, which is about every week or every other week at this point. I always will do a monthly reading and typically a mid-month. And I've done some weekly readings. I think I'm going to go back to those again and incorporate those. But I've been a little bit busy. So thanks again for all the support. I really appreciate that. And I hope that you are off to a great start in February. Um, you know, if you are feeling a little bit melancholy around the Valentine's holiday, know that you do have love within within you. So it's always available to you. And guess what else? There are billions of people in the world, okay? So all you really need to do is learn how to draw them into you. That person, the right person is out there for you. If they're not here right now, they're there. And guess what? You've already been asking for them. Now all you have to do is become a vibrational match to that person. And that oftentimes just requires you to be happy. It doesn't have to be about the person, but the other things that are going on in your life. And the next thing you know, there they are. You know, one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden they're right here in front of you. So anyway, this will be a general reading. So if I get uh, pick up things about money and finances and travel, I'll lay those out too. So thanks again for your support, and let's go. Here we go for Cancer, February, mid-month check. February 2020, mid-month check. Yes, okay, let's begin here with our Life Loves You card from Louise Hay, great woman who wrote a wonderful book called You Can Heal Your Life. I listen to the wisdom of my body. Your body has a message for you. Listen to what it is telling you. Thank your body for being the perfect messenger. So this is kind of an interesting card. Louise Hay did a lot of teaching about your body and what it's communicating. And you've probably heard this one before, but that um, disease is dis-ease. So it's your, your own discord within your thinking that causes disease. So your current situation is the Five of Pentacles, but the influences around it, wow, I love this, is the Ten of Pentacles. You, the, the destiny or what, what is kind of the foundation of this was a tower moment. Okay, so somebody had something. In the past here, you've got the Nine of Pentacles. In the more recent past, the King of Pentacles. You're either dealing with an earth sign or it's a lot to do with money. Um, coming up here in the future, you have the Star card. Let me just move these just a touch. It's always hard to tell, and I haven't been doing a bunch of readings back to back, so I try to keep my energy fresh for you, and sometimes this is a result of doing that camera angle issues. All right, good. All right, well, it ended up in the right spot. Now, on the bottom of the deck, this is interesting. You have the King of Queen of Swords, so we'll get to them in a minute. But the heart of the matter here, you've got this Five of Pentacles, and this can mean be being left out in the cold, but it can also be that you're also never alone because they always have each other. So even though they're left out of a larger group or situation, they're not completely isolated. Um, and it's also about change. And then, of course, with the 10, that is about a new cycle beginning. So you have kind of these two, you know, he's not in great health, he's on crutches. Um, so if you've had a season, and again, I see this oftentimes as a season because it's snowing around them. And it, interestingly enough, with the Ten of Pentacles, this is the wealth card, by the way. This is wealth for everyone. Um, so, you know, your heart's desire happens when the Ten of Pentacles shows up, and that is the immediate influence on you. So this is great. If you've had a season of, of feeling discontent, feeling disconnected, feeling distraught in some way, that season is coming to a close because you've got a new season here starting that is infinite abundance. This is pure potential. 
um, you can't really ascend much higher than this, even though it's a minor arcana. It's still a very powerful card because it represents, you know, every age group. It's, you know, the dogs and the beautiful floral, you know, growth here and the castle in the back. It's, like I said, it's the wealth card. So if you've been feeling poor or bankrupt, that's what I wanted to say. If you're feeling, if you've been feeling kind of spiritually bankrupt or emotionally bankrupt or even on a material plane, that you have energy coming towards you that will uplift you and, you know, make things start to happen. I do feel like overall you're going to be putting in some, um, some focus to things, some, I hate to use the word effort, I really don't like that word, because that implies that you're not being aided by the universe, like you're just working on sheer will and you don't want to do that. But I guess focus is probably the best way, very intentional focus. Now, what created all this, you had some kind of a shakeup. If it was financial, it may be that you lost some money or you got into something that didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to do, and it was devastating. Um, there was not a good foundation laid, and it may have been something that you trusted someone and got involved with. Again, it could be about a relationship too, and, and really the same kind of thing applies. I do feel like for some of you, for somebody here, there's, there's definitely more of a relationship line, but I also feel very strongly with the money. Um, so um, I haven't really talked about this, but you have a, a, you have a lot of earth represented here. Um, you also have Aquarius, Capricorn, and air. Um, don't see a lot of fire or water, but that's all right. It doesn't mean that because the sign is not strongly represented that it can't be about, you know, somebody that you know is a particular sign. I wouldn't get too hung up on that. So behind you, you have the single lady card. And so it may be, but this is somebody who's very confident. They're very content. You may have been content for a long time being single and not being attached to anything or anyone and feeling a lot of freedom. And again, this is more the distant past. So this could even be nine months to a year ago where you were feeling um, just very stable. And honestly, the more recent energy is also one of great stability. Um, this, this is sort of like, though, somebody who's humble, but yet at the same time would rather die than be embarrassed. Um, so if you were dealing with somebody like that who gave you great advice, um, but again, would be somebody who wouldn't want to become too vulnerable. Um, somebody in your life was just not willing to fully open up. It's not that they were a bad person, um, but they just weren't willing to go to the next level. They were not willing to become transparent in that way, in the way that you need to really have a stable, steady relationship. Um, so with the, the upcoming, you know, upcoming energy, I really like this because with the star, again, this is Aquarius energy, but it's, a, you know, the, the whole deck is about the fool's journey. I know I say this every time, but if you're new joining me, you might not have heard it yet. So the deck is about your soul's journey represented by the fool. And the fool's journey is one of healing and change and know that Whatever the fool encounters, it's for the fool or your soul's highest growth. It's never meant to hurt you in any way. So oftentimes the suffering that we experience is our ego, our own humanity, um, coming forward in, in bringing in fear or resistance in some way. So with the star card, this is all about wishes being fulfilled. Um, it's like wishing upon a star and asking for what you want. So what I'm t going to tell you to do is be very clear about your intentions. Go through and write down a list of po positive aspects of things that have already manifested in your life that surround you right now, whether that's a cat that you love, a very loyal friend, a stable work environment with new opportunities, or relationships that you've had that have been very good but maybe ended and you're hoping to bring those back. If you do that, you need to be very focused and intentional on only those positive aspects. Like, for instance, I really loved being with Joni because I realized how much I loved concerts. We stopped, I had not been going to concerts, and once we dated, 
we went to many concerts and I realized how much I enjoyed them and how much fun that was and how much fun we had together. So you don't want to start thinking about, but Joni's kind of demanding and I just felt, so, you know, you don't want to do that. You've got to, if you're thinking you want, because sometimes what people do is they want to bring someone back, but they, they focus too much on what they want changed about the person. And if you do that, you know what they'll do? They'll show up as that, as all the change that you, the things that you want to see change, they'll show up and be bringing those because they don't have another choice if that's how you see them. So this is a time of inspiration. And it's in the, in the Rider Waite deck, what it really means is it's a time when all that the fool has wished for comes to fruition. It's fulfillment of everything that the fool wishes for. It's all about new possibility, seeking guidance from spirit. Um, it's a very positive card. It can also mean that you are in pursuit of something more. And if that's the case, you're being divinely guided. So if you're somebody that has been thinking for a while you want to start a blog or you want to begin you know, training as a Reiki healer or a massage therapist or something like that, and you've been kind of you know, you've kind of thought about the idea, but not really strongly, and it starts to seem stronger, that could be your soul's purpose. This is all about wish fulfillment and guiding your soul's purpose. So it's a great card to have. Um, you know, and again, you've got a lot of movement in the water, okay? So it's energy that will move forward. This is not a stagnant kind of energy. Now, you do have the hanged man, and this represents you. And I'm going to tell you the best way that I like to think of this card is surrender to win. Okay, you have to let go of any limiting beliefs. So if you have a nagging voice in your head, this committee that seems to meet in your head and hold emergency sessions, you need to close the door on that because you can have, do, or be anything. And so the hanged man is all about a time of stillness and a time of personal growth. It's a very spiritual card, so it's time to let go of the need to be right and control outcomes. If you have you know, an open mind and an open heart and you're not attached to an outcome, anything is possible. Um, you know, So with this, it's all about getting a new way of looking at things. I mean, obviously he's hanging upside down, so it's like literally showing him getting a new perspective. But it's also for you to take time and develop your own path. Meditation would be great for you. Um, but the other thing is, too, with this card, I, I don't think I mentioned this one, but by reversing the way that he values things, he turns the world on its head. And so when I think about this with the star, it's like there's this go-getter mentality. And so I feel like for you... You will be unstoppable in whatever it is that you are desiring. So for those of you that want a relationship that will come to fruition, you are going to need to be willing to move forward, though. You're going to need to be willing to, like I said, surrender the past and move forward in forgiveness. So if that's the case. Um, now, this person that's around you or the situation that's around you... Um, it's, it's somebody that, you know, you're going to know if they would try to deceive you, but I honestly don't think they will. There's not m malcontent with this card. It's not really a deceptive energy. It's more about being very in tune spiritually. Um, so I do think for some of you, I think that um, whoever's coming towards you, you don't need to be weary of them. Um, it is also a time to go within, though. So it's, you know, oftentimes it's referred to as the card of the psychic. Um, but this comes out when guides are telling you you need to trust yourself. So if you have a feeling about something and you're, you're feeling like, I feel like this is the right thing to do, but the people around me might not like it, you need to trust yourself. And I would not be second guessing that because guess what? Nobody else can live your life for you. Nobody. And they can give you tons of advice. But at the end of the game, you're the one standing. So um, you need to just make sure that you are, again, being open-minded. Now, the devil card, this is your hopes and fears. 
And you might be afraid that there's a controlling element or an element of obsession or obsession, obsessive tendencies, like there's not a balance or a reciprocity, I guess, in the situation. So, um, you know, that's your fear. That doesn't mean that's true though, right? So fear is an acronym for future events appearing real. And again, we can get these committees established in our heads that start talking to us. How many of you at uh, 1130 or midnight or one o'clock in the morning have full-blown committee meetings going on? If that's you, you, the best thing you can do for yourself is to learn how to quiet your mind just by listening to a continuous ambient sound and keep you know, redirecting the thoughts so you're not thinking about them for long periods of time. And I know that can be a process, but you will find that all the inspiration of the star, it'll be like automatic if you can do that. The things that can be brought in with this card will, and, and if you can quiet your mind, um, will completely overpower this kind of energy. So, um, you know, you end up here, this is kind of interesting, you end up here with the Eight of Pentacles. And so this is like, Somebody who is taking care of their money, they're taking care of their home, you know, maybe even too, like if you have been, you know, thinking about doing some things to your house, that's also gonna go well. Um, but as far as like financial things, again, with the high priestess involved here, if you have a certain inclination, like you're thinking about calling a financial planner and sitting down and meeting, that would be a great thing to do. Um, if you're thinking about starting something new, to maybe generate some passive income, that's also gonna go well. But again, in the relationship realm, I know this isn't the most romantic card, so for those of you that are like, I don't need money, well, yeah, you don't, because here you go, right, with all these pentacles, of course you don't. Um, but it's also a reminder to kind of pay attention to details, because sometimes we can get lost in, you know, the big picture, and we're not as tuned in to some of the smaller details. There's an old saying, it's the ants that get you. It's all that little day-to-day -day stuff that tends to build up and become stressful. So um, you could also be too with this card um, in the High Priestess. If you're working, if you're looking at a relationship, I, I want to tell you this person is willing to invest in themselves. They're willing to change. They're willing to you know, like I said, if you concentrate on the person that they were, that's how they're going to show up again. But this person is going to want to be different. They're, and again, I do feel like it's an ex. I don't feel like it's a new person necessarily. I know some of you are going to hate that because you're going, no, oh, no, no, I don't want them. Well, again, there's billions of people. I'm not saying you have to take them, but I do think they're going to be much more willing to see their part in things and want to change and rise to... The occasion now you're gonna have great insight and clarity with these two absolutely crystal clear and with the high priestess involved in this um, you're not going to have any confusion about it so no matter what you decide because again I think the decision is going to be up to you cancer you're going to feel very confident in the end that you did the right thing there's not going to be any second guessing and there's not going to be regret so let go of any fears that you might have and know that you are being divinely guided. You are in tune with the things that you need to be in tune with. So um, very nice reading. I mean, it's like a very straightforward reading too. Um, even though I took it in a couple directions, the cards align really well. So I do feel like this is, um, again, for you where you're going to be in your personal power. I don't feel like you're gonna be in a situation where you're like in analysis paralysis. It will be very clear. So anyways, thank you again for watching and I love you and I will be back soon.